You're listening to Foundation After Midnight Radio on 93.3. The Foundation authorized broadcast for personnel by personnel. I'm your host, DJ Twisted Toaster, and it's midnight somewhere in the world. DJ Twisted Toaster. Hello, listeners. We're back to our regularly scheduled broadcasts after the unfortunate containment breach last time. Tonight, I'm joined by Dr. Warpstar, who will be bringing you an anomalous weather report later on. For now, though, I've been given the green light to share some breaking developments. As you all know, FAM Radio's usual host, DJ Skip, was kidnapped, and I've been filling in for him in the meantime. Details on his disappearance have been scarce, and besides infrequent voicemails he's left from phones he had smuggled on his person, there hasn't been much word on his situation. That is, until now. We're getting word that the GOI who attacked him and has been holding him hostage has been identified and their location tracked. A splinter of the Church of the Broken God group, the Cogworks, mistook Skip for a high-level researcher who they had planned to extort for their own goals. Skip managed to use two of the three cell phones he had on his person at the time of his kidnapping to contact the Foundation and allow them to triangulate his location. Held within a safe house by the Cogwork group, a coordinated plan has been laid out to retrieve him. I've been told the operation went into action at midnight tonight, and I'll be giving live updates as things progress. So for now, until I get more, our normally scheduled, slightly less exciting, Foundation personnel announcements will follow. First up to bat, in our infrequent sports corner, the Site-17 fake aliens are faking it until they make it. They've won their first three games of the season so far, but will they be able to hold it together as they face off against the newly minted Site-104's Viking Tree Catapults? The Viking Tree Catapults have been standing tall and throwing hard in their first season, but have one loss, one tie, and one win to their name so far. Dr. Isaacson, their softball team head coach, has said that the new team is finding their groove now that they've played a few league games. Their last game being their first win ever, Dr. Isaacson said that they're looking to start a winning streak with that momentum. Next in personnel announcements, Anomalous Animals Anonymous, or AAA for short, is a small monthly meetup for personnel who find themselves transformed, evolved, devolved, swapped with, or otherwise physically changed into an animal or otherwise non-human form. Transformation of any kind can be pretty distressing, and adjusting to one's new form and new life can be challenging. Thankfully, you are not alone, and others have dealt with these kinds of challenges before. Dr. Roth, a researcher turned into a cat, and Dr. Kane, a researcher turned into a dog, usually lead the meetings. While local personnel, like Dr. Fish, usually attend in person, international researchers are invited to video chat in from wherever they are, just as the various personnel from the French branch do. The French branch being home to Dr. Hinault, a salmon with human teeth who understands French, Dr. Sendris, who is fused with an iguana, and a being named Aside, who is a large humanoid blue mantis. Non-anomalous personnel are asked to be respectful and courteous to their colleagues' conditions, and to not stop by just to stare. While the thought of a cat with a lab coat and glasses may sound cute, Dr. Roth is, quote, not afraid to cut a bitch, bitch, end quote. Dr. Bright is allowed to attend while his mind possesses a non-human host body, such as a monkey or a guinea pig. Ah, we've got our first update on the rescue operation. The exact location is still undisclosed, but field agents under the guise of SCP Front Construction Company have moved into position to block off the surrounding streets. Civilians are being discreetly evacuated to minimize casualties and anomalous exposure. So far, no unusual movement from within the building. These cogwork people don't know what's coming for them. More updates as they come in. Next up, a personal personnel update personally handed off by a specific personnel who wants to keep things professional, or else he will make it quote-unquote personal. Dr. Clef has requested that any personnel who writes steamy fanfiction involving him to <clears throat> keep it to themselves deep in the secret corners of their heart where true love blooms and I don't have to see it. Research into if the secret corners of the heart is actually where true love grows, is being headed by senior researcher Dr. Margaret Sawyer Sheen and funded by the Dr. Alto Clef Appreciation Fan Club. I didn't know there even was a Dr. Alto Clef Appreciation Fan Club. But that actually makes a lot of sense, now that I think about it. Not that I would join it. 
uh, not that there's anything wrong with Dr. Clef or his fans, but also, uh, never mind. Next announcement. Don't forget, Wednesday is pizza day. So head on down to the cafeteria and grab yourself a hot slice. No word on which site the infinite pizza box will be on loan to this Wednesday. But regardless, free pizza in the cafe. Get it before the budget committee rethinks this proposal. The SCP Foundation holds no liability for any injuries or illnesses sustained or contracted through the attendance of Pizza Day. A security note from Foundation personnel, Dr. Jacob Kens Kensington. Loose lips, lose skips. Maintain operation security. You never know who's listening. Talking about your work outside of the Foundation is largely prohibited and puts you, your friends and family, the Foundation, the world at large, and reality as we know it, at risk. It's a lot of pressure to keep quiet about it all sometimes, but the Foundation has outlets to help manage the stress of the job. Foundation assigned therapists and counselors, along with processes and policies for letting family members in on your work, are all just a simple click and a submitted form away. The Family Disclosure Protocol allows loved ones to be granted a special class of Level 0 clearance and alleviates the stress and physical-slash-mental strain from constant deception of loved ones. For those who'd rather keep your loved ones in the dark about your, well, work in the dark, there are Foundation-approved and supplied cover-life fabrications, so you can still have relatable topics to talk about with non-Foundation civilians. You'll be prepped with all sorts of insight into the field of your choice, along with all the mundane terminology and first-hand stories you would have if your job wasn't one filled with anomalous entities and world-shifting jewelry. And lastly, there's always the on-site personnel happy hours every week, where you can mix it up with other Foundation staff who get it. It being the work we do here to keep the world sane and spinning. I'm being given another update on the operation going on with DJ Skip. With the aid of advanced infrared cameras, they've determined that DJ Skip is being held in the sub-basement of the GOI-controlled building. He's not alone down there, and it seems there are multiple entities moving around the building, though not all of them show typical heat signatures. It's unclear exactly how many of these cogworks are in number, being a splinter of a bigger GOI. Right now, things seem relatively calm in there, and they are currently unaware of the Foundation forces surrounding them. Here's hoping DJ Skip can be extracted before a full-on firefight breaks out. More as things unfold. Oh, uh, I just got another development in. This one says, and I quote, The Foundation is gonna kick some mechanical ass tonight. Eat it, Chrome Chompers. Okay, that doesn't seem like an official update on the situation, actually. I think one of the task force folks just got a hold of the radio email address. Our radio email is always open for site updates, which you can submit yourself at scp93.famradio at gmail.com to be read on the air. We do try to maintain a certain level of professionalism here at FAM Radio, though. Ugh. This is why I'm glad I don't work with field agents anymore. Uh, well, now's a good time to take a look at that anomalous weather report. Take it away, Dr. Warpstar. Thanks, Andrew. Dr. Warpstar here with your daily and weekly anomalous weather report. When the sun is high and it's hot outside, you need to protect your skin from the ultraviolet light. A great way to do that is to wear a large brimmed hat. The bigger the better. This, coincidentally, will also help protect you against being picked up and eaten by the anomalous sky jellyfish, SCP-312. It can create small lenticular clouds around itself, and they look like fluffy flying saucers in the sky. Just like the sun, you don't want to look directly at it. If you do, you could set off its predatory instincts. The best means of escaping if you can't get cover is to move at a speed of 30 kilometers per hour or by entering a large crowd. This seems to confuse the jellyfish and might cause it to switch targets. The Foundation already has one of these suckers in containment, Though there should be at least three out there in the wild, these jellyfish will often follow a single person for months or even years, which makes locating them nearly impossible. So if you notice a flying saucer cloud following you around, don't look directly at its core, wear a large hat, stay in crowds, and as always, call it into the foundation. The rest of your weekly forecast is mostly cloudy with a high chance of looking over your shoulder at clouds while trying not to look too closely at them. 
Well, thank you for that insightful anomalous weather report, Dr. Warpstar. In more personnel news, a special thanks go out from the family of Dr. Gears for the support during a trying time. While the Foundation does offer medical benefits, it's still an organization of people, and we are a community that comes together to protect mankind. From the unknowing masses to one of our very own. Members of the Foundation helped raise funds to go towards a surgery the good doctor is undergoing later this month. I know he wasn't expecting such an outpouring, but his work is well known throughout the Foundation, regardless of clearance level. Some of his work has involved well-known SCPs, such as 682, the hard-to-destroy reptile the softball team gets their name from, 106, the old man who pulls people into a pocket torture dimension, which is the stuff of nightmares, 914, a clockwork machine that can transform material sent through it on settings such as rough or very fine, and of course, testing on 216, the pan-dimensional vending machine that we have in a site cafeteria though now with three guards assigned to it. We here at Foundation After Midnight Radio wish him and his family all the best and a swift recovery for him post-op. Next, we have a word from our sponsor, followed by featured personnel music, Secure, Contain, Protect, by Madame Macabre. Hey, it's Dirty King 7 here. Thank you all for listening to FAM Radio. Today, I've got a long overdue Jumbotron message going out to Rebecca Azure from Reese Bailey. Here's wishing Site Director Azure a happy holiday. I don't know where you're going, but you deserve a break from the literal hell that is running a site. Congratulations on doing such an amazing job. I could never manage it. Stay safe and don't let the insurgents bite. This is the second Jumbotron message reading on FAM Radio. If you're interested in getting your own message read on future episodes, check on the Toy King Studios Etsy shop for more info and pricing. Just a disclaimer, there are very limited slots as there are very limited episodes, and they may be very delayed. For those looking for something more physical to secure for those you protect, contain the following items. Some SCP pins of classic SCPs, 049-999-079-035, and Dr. Bright as well as new SCP front magnets and on-site personnel parking permit stickers. There's usually only a short run printed of each design, so once they're gone, they may be locked away for good. Now that the sponsored message is done, we are going back to our featured personnel music, Secure, Contain, Protect, by Madame Macabre. I 
took to heart the suffering Secure, contained, protect, they say But sometimes it don't feel that way But the mysteries they call to me With the science and technology Answering questions better Security, but baby, they've got 401k and benefits. Despite the stigma working for the man, please understand these people let me cut things up all day and they pay. Secure, contain, protect. I'll never know what's coming next. This job. Took to heart the suffering Secure, contain, protect, they say But sometimes it don't feel that way But the mysteries they call to me With the science and technology Secure, contain, protect I'll never know what's coming next This job of mine would do me in If I took to heart the suffering Secure, contain, protect, they say But sometimes it don't feel that way But the mysteries they call to me With the science and technology Answer me your questions better Let them know secure, contain, protect Unveiling your horrors better Let them show secure, contain, protect Let's see. Next up, we have... Hold on. I'm now getting access to a live feed for this update on the operation to recover Skip. The retrieval team has entered the building, with agents moving in from multiple directions. The GOI has been caught by surprise, and many are being taken out before they can properly fight back. The entities have started to give resistance, though. It looks, and this isn't very clear, but it seems various constructs that hadn't shown up on infrared imaging are now moving into action to defend against the Foundation push. Agents are meeting the resistance head-on, though, as they're well prepared for various anomalous defenses and weaponry to be deployed against them. This is looking dicey. A few of the GOI members in the lower levels have barricaded themselves in. Their makeshift defenses are slowing the MTF from moving into the lower levels. It looks like at least two entities have shut themselves into the same room DJ Skip is being held. This doesn't look good. Agents are moving in on Skip's location, and are aware of the situation with the Cogwork members in the room with him. The retrieval team is getting into place, but are stopping short of the barricade defenses. Whoever or whatever is in the room with Skip seem to be more focused on the attacking forces than Skip, which is probably for the best at the moment. Zooming in on the basement, it looks very likely that Skip is tied to a chair in the room. The retrieval team has subdued the remaining GOI members on the lower level, all except the ones in the room with DJ Skip. The heat signatures are weird on those two, but they're moving around the room erratically. They may be trying to barricade the room's door in. Oh, in their hurry they've knocked over DJ Skip, though they aren't stopping to set him back up. The team has broken into two groups with the main group still in the hallway leading to the barricaded room where Skip is. The other group has gone to the level above the sub-basement, and seem to be preparing something in the room just above where DJ Skip is being held. It may be that they're preparing to breach the room from above. Agents in the hallway are attempting to communicate with members of the GOI in the room, who seem to be not paying attention to DJ Skip at all at this point. It's, uh, a little unclear with this camera. But it looks like Skip is trying to move to the far wall, wiggling along the floor while he's still tied to the chair. Wait! Oh no! DJ Skip must have knocked something over. One of the members has noticed him and are dragging him over against the wall with them. This is getting intense, folks. I'm not entirely sure if I'll be able to keep you updated as this moves forward. I don't know how this is going to play out. I may not be able to keep updating you until after- oh, It gets really intense at this point. Skip?! Everything happens so fast, but- But I thought- how are you... where did you come from? 
How are you here? Oh, I was just going to wait until after the broadcast, but I couldn't help myself. But but I'm reading, I'm broadcasting a live operation right now about your rescue. Andrew, sorry, DJ Twisted Toaster, this is an after midnight radio broadcast. Why would the Foundation do a live broadcast of a secret operation to recover a kidnapped personnel on an unsecure radio frequency? <laughs> That's some pretty classified information to be just putting out there for anyone to hear. So this has all been fake? Well, no, it all happened just like you've been reporting. You're watching the actual footage and information from when it all went down, just with a delay of a few days. This last weekend, actually. Why? I was told this was actually happening live. What's the point of me reading all this now as if it was still going on? Morale. Makes for an exciting story, more so because I came back in one piece, more or less. My kidnapping was broadcast over all the sites, so why not broadcast my rescue as well? And you walked in just now because... Because I'm not great at surprises. You were doing such a great job telling it all, I just wanted to keep listening from inside the booth. Also, Andrew, I'm glad to see you're not a toaster. Um, I'm not a toaster? Yes, and I'm glad to see it. You see, I came across some fan art of you since getting back. They drew you as a toaster, and I got concerned something had happened. You, you thought I might actually be a toaster now. Stranger things have happened here, DJ Twisted Toaster. Becoming one's namesake due to some anomalous misfires a common enough occurrence. I mean, I happen to skip several broadcasts. <laughs> hmm. Though, thankfully, you're all right, though, to be fair, you are a very cute toaster. Well, thanks, DJ Skip. Uh, we're glad to have you back and all right as well. And I think I speak for everyone that we're glad you're... Whoa, uh, what happened to your hand? My hand? No, the other one. Oh! It's different. Yeah, so, uh, long story, short story, the GOI Cogwork folks were a little over-eager to convert me to their Church of the Broken God cult after I wouldn't give them the info they wanted. They then decided to replace my hand with something more robotic to, uh, cleanse me slowly of flesh and bone with metal and gears. So they cut off my hand to replace it with something vaguely mechanical abomination thing. It was pretty awful. That's terrible. I'm so sorry they did that to you. That sounds very traumatic. It was undoubtedly the worst part of this kidnapping. It was a mess, blood everywhere. I definitely passed out from the pain a few times. Uh, I can imagine. Did, did the Foundation reattach your hand then? Your right hand doesn't exactly look metal. Well, you see, the Foundation personnel started the raid on the place I was being held at while the GOI was about halfway through the process. Thankfully, the operation started before the Cogwork folks could try to install any new metal devices to me. Those Cog guys seem pretty delusional, not really all their metal bits not including. Their instruments were not very professional looking, or very sterile, or very sharp. The Foundation managed to bandage me up before I lost too much blood, but the damage was done and it was too much to attach my left hand. So you didn't get a robot hand from the GOI, and you didn't get your own hand back from the Foundation? What is that one made of, then? It looks sort of patchwork. Fabric and stuffing, basically. Some thread. Wait, what? For real? You see, coming back to the facility here, I was passing through the testing wing to get to the medical wing, just through the containment wing, and in the hall, I walked by a curious little teddy bear. I guess my injury caught its attention and it got away from its researchers. The little thing came running back around the corner and leapt right at me. This isn't the teddy bear that, uh, I mean, I've heard of an SCP builder bear that makes nightmarish teddy bear things out of scissors and human ears. It's not that one, right? Yep, I mean, no. I've heard of that one too, though thankfully never seen it. But you can imagine my surprise when this one came running at me. I had just recently been rescued from being kidnapped, don't know if you know, de-handed, and had lost a good amount of blood. Now I'm back on sight, but a living teddy bear is lunging at me. Ugh, that does sound unnerving. It was terrifying. <laughs> there was a lot of screaming and shouting, mostly by me. I bet. 
Eventually, the researchers caught up, calmed everyone down, including me, enough to explain that the teddy bear was a safe class, thankfully. This was a different bear with a more quilted patchwork look to it. I believe SCP-2295, if I have that correct. The bear with the heart of patchwork. All it wanted to do was patch me up. You're going to be stringing these puns along moving forward a lot, aren't you? Ah, uh, you'll learn to appreciate them. I'd honestly been so tired that I didn't have much energy to really resist it if it had been up to anything nefarious. It worked pretty quickly, given the right supplies. That's anomalies for you. It had already removed the bandages and fixed up the stitch work on my wrist by the time I knew what it was trying to do. At this point, I was sitting up against the wall, looking at this bear standing over my arm, but it seemed like it was waiting for something. The researchers told me it was waiting for my permission to work on me, otherwise they could get it back to the testing lab. So you let it make you a patchwork hand? Well, I, I didn't really see a downside to it. As far as prosthetics, one made by an anomalous urgent care bear couldn't be the worst option. Once I said yes, it seemed to look around for more supplies from the personnel gathered near us at this point. It took a fingerless glove from the security officer, some cloth from some of the researchers. It even used a bit of itself to make some of the fingers and stuffing. <laughs> kind of felt like everyone coming together to give me my hand back. It was... Amazing, actually, to watch the little bear work. I guess it's reassuring not every SCP we have locked up here is malicious and dangerous. It's definitely fascinating the things we have in containment. When it was done, well, I hugged it, and it walked off with its researchers. I still went by the medical office to get checked up, you know, make sure everything's alright, but I could already start to move my hand a little on my own. There's no negative anomalous effects to it? Well, as with most anomalous things, it is unclear how it works. Like, at all. X-rays show it's just fabric and stuffing in there. Even being right there, the bear sewed things up so quickly it was hard to follow what it was really doing. There was no discomfort to report, and even though I'm told it apparently attached threads to my nerve endings, which, by the way, impressive, it's not really sensitive like my old hand, but like... I can feel pressure and such. A researcher that was assigned to the bear has set up some appointments to check in on me over the next few days and weeks to see how it's holding up. Part medical checkup, part test results, I suppose. The foundation is thorough, at least. <laughs> that they are. Hey, DJ Skip? Yes, DJ Twisted Toaster. Can I... can I hug you? <laughs> of course, Andrew. Bring it here. Uh, what was that? Oh, how it's just my new hand. Is, is there a squeaker in your hand? Ha, gotcha, just kidding. Oh, wouldn't that be the worst? Now, on to the radio show. This has been Hand Over to DJ and No One Gets Hurt. Episode 10, Foundation After Midnight Radio, a podcast by Toad King Studios, written by Eric... Jay Stover. Andrew is voiced by Paper Air Ship. Dr. Warpstar is voiced by Warpstar. DJ Skip is voiced by Kyle Stover. This episode featured music was Secure Contain Protect by Madame Macabre. Credit reading by Dixon Stover. Stay tuned for more. Thank you very much for that. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not going to you. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right, we're done. We're done then. Shut it off. Turn the recorder off. Thank you for listening to Foundation After Midnight Radio. We have a lot of fun on this podcast, as you can see. Be sure to follow SCP FAM Radio on Instagram and Twitter to catch SCP memes and behind-the-scenes posts between episodes. Please consider supporting Toad King Studios on Patreon for future content, including this podcast and hopefully more. All reference material and their authors are credited in the space provided. Check the description or the SCP FAM radio hub page on the SCP wiki for the complete list of works. Content relating to the SCP Foundation, including the SCP Foundation logo, is licensed under Creative Commons to share a like 3.0 and all concepts originate from the SCP wiki.net, released under Attribution Share Like 3.0 Unported License. Thank you all for listening. This has been Toad King 07. Stay safe out there, folks.